you have your Bibles this morning, you can turn to Luke chapter 2. Familiar portion of Scripture this time of year. And uh, I'm going to think about something for uh, the Christmas season. I've uh, preached on it, and uh, we'll have one more uh, thought concerning it. Of course, next Sunday being our praise and worship service. And uh, I guess uh, I will at least give you some thoughts about it. Uh, I will actually uh, post a, a video with, uh, with a, uh, a sermon on it concerning that. I always enjoy preaching on the wise men, and that'll be, uh, be next week. But, uh, but I've, I've preached on a place, or the promise, I guess. I started out in uh, the place of his birth. We talked about Bethlehem and talked about a present and uh, uh, talked about, um, again, some of those things, that, uh, what, what that meant and what God has given to us. And today, uh, if titled, my sermon title is A Praise Lifted. And uh, a little different about Christmas, but I think for us as believers that hopefully uh, we take something uh, with it and from it this morning. We're going to read out of Luke chapter 2 and verse 8. And it says, And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, you shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing, which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had, that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Our uh, text and thought this morning actually will come from verse 20. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Let us pray this morning. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful for the day, for what you've given to us. Thankful for a time and for the season that we celebrate uh, the birth of Christ. And Father, as we've uh, already been reminded, uh, both in message and in Sunday school and song, just uh, the importance that that should have to us. And again, what we are to take from that. And Lord, uh, we ask that you would help each and every one of us here to uh, to take something about the birth of Christ this morning. And Father, may we leave this place, first of all, if we don't know you, that may we leave it knowing and having a relationship with you and knowing you as Savior as to why you came. But Father, those of us who do, may we leave like the shepherds, just glorifying and praising you for all that you do for us and for coming to be all that you are going to be to us. Father, again, we ask that you'll bless in the class in the back. Help me to preach this morning. I ask for your help. Fill me with the power of your spirit, and I ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. As we uh, consider this uh, passage concerning the shepherds and the shepherds out in the field uh, just doing their thing, and uh, that was a, a common thing around uh, uh, just a Bible uh, profession, if you will. Uh, we can uh, trace uh, actually shepherding uh, all throughout the Bible. David was a shepherd. Uh, the others were. Christ uses it as an example. One of the titles that he takes for himself, the Good Shepherd, and what a great passage and uh, thought that is and how he explains that. So we, uh, we understand much uh, in the Bible is just the time frame of shepherding and that it was something. And these guys were just uh, doing their thing, if you will, out in the field. And uh, lo and behold, the sky lit up and a messenger came. Could you imagine? I mean, just imagine. And um, we uh, uh, sometimes it's hard to, to go out of uh, uh, our house uh, where we live and, uh, and be away from light. I know every now and then uh, me and my wife will come out here and do something out to the church. And, and of course, they've been in the country and there's still quite a bit of light. We've got a, a big light out front and some other things, but you get in certain parts. Of, and I said, boy, it really gets dark out here. And, uh, you know, you get away from town a little bit. I mean, and get away from where there's street lights everywhere and it just gets dark. 
And uh, you could imagine uh, places that they would have been. They might have had light. They may have had a fire and stuff. But And they might have been able to look down. Who knows if somebody stays up late. There might have been, you know, candles and lights in the window, whatever, lamps and things. But for the most part, these guys were out just in the field. Maybe the stars were out. Maybe the moon was out. Uh, watching their sheep, they had probably put them in the fold, which protected them door in, door out. You know, they protected them as they did from the, the wolves and the other things that would come around. And as we see the pictures in scriptures, uh, we get the idea maybe of how, and you can study sort of maybe of how the uh, fold and all that worked. But all of a sudden the sky lit up and they seen something new that night, something they'd never seen. And of course, uh, it's interesting that when the angel of the Lord came to him, uh, the very first thing, because it said the, you know, the sky, the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid, and I can imagine. And the angel, at least first thing, said, fear not. Uh, you know, it had to. I mean, them guys were, uh, they had to be petrified. They really did. Uh, all of a sudden, the whole light, this sky just lights up like that. And what a vision they would see. And then the angel would come. And the angel had a message to him, and, and it started with that, fear not. But it says, I'm bringing good tidings. You know, uh, Christmas often will bring good tidings. Uh, you know, for a lot of us, it does. I mean, we'll talk to some people we may not have uh, talked to in a while. And, and hopefully you do that. You may have family and those people, uh, you know, make the call, make the, you know, send a text in our uh, new generation. That's sort of what we do. But make a contact with people. You know, it's a good time of year uh, to do that. And uh, some folks and uh, everybody gets a little busy, but hopefully it brings good tidings and uh, good welcomes and those things that have. But the angel had something a little more than that. Not just a greeting, but said, I have a message. I have something good to tell you. And um, the angel would declare that. And, uh, and I like the passage that it says, because it says it's a good tidings of great joy. Something that's going to bring joy. But then I also really like that last phrase in verse 10, which shall be to all people. All people. You know, uh, we, we so often dismiss that. And we live in a world that is is so divided and so ran away. As a matter of fact, people, uh, you know, they, they attack Christians a lot over that. And of course, some of them deserve it probably. I mean, and I say deserve it, but they've done things that aren't good. But, you know, the Bible speaks that the gospel goes out to all people. And we know he has a chosen people, the nation of Israel, and he dealt with them and they were just his people. They were actually the custodians of Christ. If you look in the Bible, just the, the lineage and the family and how he brought that. But yet when the message came of the truth of Christ and the message came of the truth of the gospel and all that we read in scripture, it goes out to all people everywhere, despite color, creed, birth, place of birth, family order brought in, uh, riches or none. Uh, I mean, all of that stuff is left out and it just simply comes that the message comes to all people. And all people everywhere were given a message. And this uh, messenger came to the shepherds. Now, uh, they didn't speak to all people that night. It came and uh, the messenger uh, simply said, but it was the message that was going to be to all people. And then it began to tell them what that message was. And that message, and the message has got some important parts to it. Because it says this day, and that's what we always focus on, as we've made mention before we don't know that December 25th is the birth of Christ, the real day that he came into the earth. Uh, probably not. Uh, people argue, they'll give you all kinds of stuff about it. And uh, interesting reading, I guess, but the bottom line is we don't know. We don't know, but we do know that there was a day. And that's what we really focus on is that there was a time that God left heaven and came to earth in the form of a little child. Actually, he'd already left. Mary was already carrying him. So this had happened uh, nine months before. And uh, Mary, uh, pregnant by the Holy Ghost, and uh, the Spirit moved upon her. And, and again, she was with child and, and about to, to bear a child. And Christ was going to be born this night. But it said this day, this day, that child physically came to earth. And the angel's message was that, that there was a day that Christ would come. And he gave the place the city of David, of course, Bethlehem, just shy of Jerusalem a few miles. And it said a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Well, that's a mouthful, isn't it? 
if we study our Bibles and simply say, and we hope we don't say that, uh, it's easy to read, but let us pause for a minute and take it in. And for those of us who are, who are saved, let us, uh, and we know the Lord, let us even reflect on that a minute, that he's a savior to all men. Many today may not acknowledge him as that. Many today may not have any idea of the message of Christmas. Matter of fact, it's uh, the devil's done a really good job of consuming it with everything but Christ. Uh, we've got all kinds of legends and characters and tales and just things that, you know, infiltrate and sort of fill people's minds. Of course, again, the hustle and bustle of giving, giving gifts. And, and again, some of those things, nothing wrong with that. But again, it seems like the devil has used all that to push out what the real importance was, that there was a day that Christ came. And there was a day that more than just Christ, the Messiah, who fulfilled all the promises of the Old Testament, made his entrance into the world, but that a Savior came. A Savior. That's a, a good word. I don't know if you've ever needed a Savior physically in your life. I don't know if you've ever been in a position where you actually felt you were in danger and harm and that uh, somebody had to, say, pull you out of something or pull you away from something or somebody pushed you out of the way or did something that truly they might uh, fulfill that namesake uh, within the world in which we live. Uh, everybody may not have a, an experience like that, and they're probably glad that they don't. But you know, in reality, when we look at what the Bible says about us spiritually, we were in need and we're still in need. Mankind is in need today. The Bible declares that we're sinners and we're sinners by very birth, by birth, by choice. Uh, it all comes down by our actions. So many, so often we tie sin into just what we do, but no, sin is who we are, or sinners, because we are born with a sin nature. We are born with a debt that we cannot pay. And the Bible declares that there's just no way to remove any of that sin, that it had to be done uh, by something that, would, uh, that God would accept that would take that sin away. And therefore, Jesus was born as a Savior. We might say a sacrifice as well. And those days that we sort of hold, uh, hold uh, important to us, and again, the, the Easter season, we celebrate the resurrection of Christ, but he had to come first. He had to come as a, as a child and he would live and grow and then he would sacrifice himself on the cross of Calvary to pay that sin debt for all people. And again, what a great message it is. The message of a Savior. You need a Savior this morning. I hope you know the Savior this morning. I hope it's meant something to you. I hope you've trusted in Christ. I hope if not, that you find a place to realize that you are a sinner and without uh, Jesus in this world, that you have no hope of heaven and no hope of, uh, again, of having your sins forgiven, then she'll find him a savior. This would be a great day to do that. And the Christmas season would be a great time to find that. And it says that Christ the Lord, he was the, the Lord from heaven. And, uh, and always a neat verse uh, to read in conjunction with this. Uh, John doesn't necessarily give us a lot of details about the birth of Christ in particular concerning the manger, concerning anything about that. Of course, Mark doesn't either. Mark presents him as a servant. A servant's birth is really unimportant in this world. And so Mark doesn't give uh, many details at all. John presents him as the son of God. And John gives a very interesting detail about Christ coming to earth. And that's in John chapter one and verse 14, because it says in the word, and that's speaking of Christ uh, throughout that passage, it calls him the word. And the word was made flesh. That's like us and dwelt among us. And that means Christ came and it says, and we beheld his glory. The glory is the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. And he is the only begotten, he's begotten of God. And there was a day that he came to this earth and took upon himself the form of flesh. He felt, he, uh, he had emotion, he had everything that we had. He was as much man as he was God, as much God as he was man. Sometimes that's hard to, sort of justify maybe th or the uh, ra rationale in our mind, but yet the Bible presents it that way and we see Christ coming in the form of human flesh, living a sinless life to be our savior. But he is Christ the Lord. But the shepherds that day, after they heard this message, after the angel would tell them, they would go and see. They would all get up and they're saying, we're gonna go and we're gonna uh, see this thing that they've told us about. 
maybe not a long journey, not sure, but they probably made them some light if they didn't have a little fire or something going there. They probably got them a lantern, a lamp, something that they uh, could travel with, and they may have known the way. Uh, they may have followed whatever directions they were given, uh, and so they journey. Uh, we don't know how far, but they had to go uh, just a bit. They said, it's over here. Let's go see this thing, and they will find... Uh, not what you would think for uh, a savior. You would think that somebody that would hold that title would be a little more, you know, uh, uh, it'd be a little more special. Uh, just like even when uh, later the Magi, the wise men would come to see him. You think you would find a king in a little more special of a place, but they would find him in a manger. Of course, that was the message given that you're going to find this babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Not a place that you would expect. Not a place that uh, you would... Uh, probably look for someone who was going to do something great or something big. It was a very humbling place. But the shepherds would go to see that, and they would come, and they would tell the message that was given unto them. And even Mary and Joseph still sort of probably in awe of all that was being done in their lives. And it said Mary, that is his mother, uh, held on to these things and pondered him as, you know, the shepherds told it told what was uh, uh, known of them after they found Mary and Joseph. And they, she held all this in the heart because they probably relayed that message that was given to them out in the field that night by the angel of the Lord that, hey, this is, uh, is going to bring joy to all the people of the world. And that this uh, child that you have is a Savior and that he's Christ the Lord. And maybe Mary and Joseph did get that. I don't know. Uh, you know, it's hard to maybe understand. Of course, she later on confessed these, uh, uh, or in her, uh, uh, again, uh, some of the scriptures that we have concerning her, uh, the magnificent things that come later. Uh, you see, she seems like she understands and knows, but you really wonder because it said that she held on and, and uh, she pondered them in her heart and she tucked those things and kept them because they were saying this now about her child. But then we come to where we want to focus for the next few minutes. And I want to challenge you a little bit about what the shepherds did because the shepherds would leave the, the manger there after they had visited with Christ after they came. And, and it's always interesting. I, I did want to uh, I always like to point out, you know, the shepherds only brought the one thing they had that night. They brought themselves. There wasn't gifts. There wasn't anything else. And when someone comes to see Christ and they come to see him, that's all you need. You just come as yourself. Just as I am, as the old hymn says. We uh, so often uh, look at the wise men. The wise men, I think, came for totally different reasons. They didn't see him in the manger. And I think God was just providing. I think it was just showing that the world came to worship. They were preparing. They'd seen a star. As soon as he was born, that star was there. And they were looking and thinking. And all of a sudden, it's like they were excited in a whole other part of the world. But yet, their visit came on a whole different level. When we come to Christ, all we need is us. It's not bringing things. So often we get the things part out of things, thinking, well, I have to do this. I have to do that. Shepherds didn't probably clean. They just said, we're going. They were in the field. Uh, it may not have been, uh, uh, they may not have been prepared. They may not have, uh, you know, put on their, uh, their, their Sunday best or whatever. Or, uh, you know, who knows what, but they probably didn't do any of that. They just went and seen. They just came to Christ as they are. Take that for a thought. We are to just come to Christ. People, all people, come to Christ as they are. They don't have to clean up first. They don't have to do that. Jesus will do all of that if they come to Him. You know, but they came and they found Him and then they, they left a little different that night. The Scripture bears that they would go away and they, they would return and that they would return just glorifying and praising God. I know it's interesting that we have a, a, a whole book of the Bible that's almost... You know, just about that. It relays uh, short things and stories, but there's so much in the Psalms about just giving praise unto our God. Matter of fact, the shortest chapter in your Bible, Psalm 117, just two verses. It says, Oh, praise the Lord, all ye nations. Praise Him, all ye people. For His merciful kindness is great toward us. Let the truth of the Lord endureth for, and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. And so, uh, again, the shortest verse in the Bible deals with praise and something so simple that we could find a number of the Psalms. Psalm 92 and verse 1 says, It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. 
upon an instrument of ten strings, and upon the psaltery, upon the harp, with a solemn sound. For thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. O Lord, how great are thy works, and the thoughts are very deep. You know, uh, we are to praise the Lord for who he is. And uh, we are to give praise unto him for what he's done. And for being all that he is uh, in our life, we are to give praise unto the Lord. I think the shepherds left... Uh, Again, a little different that night. I think they had seen something. And matter of fact, they wanted to tell others about it. And it says that they returned glorifying and praising God for the things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. I want to give you a couple things about their praise quickly. And then we're going to end our service a little different today. But it said that our, you know, their praise and I think our praise are to be the same way. I think their praise honored God. I think they realized that, you know, God had given us this. The Lord has blessed us. God's met with us. He sent us a messenger. He told us all this, but you know, our praise are to look to heaven where God's given us a, a message. We may not see the angel as they did, but he sent us something and it tells us all about it. It records this message to the shepherds. It tells us about what he would have us to know, but our praise should honor God. Our praise should be heavenward as we uh, give it for what God has done. You know, it's not the works of our hands. You know, nothing centers around us in this. It's all about what he has done and what he's done for us. It ought to be from the heart. I think that's nice. The shepherd's heart was, uh, I think they were just pure at it. And it's like, this is, this is good to us. They were filled with joy. They found peace in a little, uh, a little part of the world in a manger scene, a little child in swaddling clothes, attended by his very creation. I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing when you think of all that. The son of God laying in a simple, humble place, attended by uh, animals that probably behaved that night. They probably made a few sounds as they would, but his very creation and his mother there and then his guardian dad that he had been given in this world and those things that were there that night, we see that uh, again, that God had looked out, but the shepherds seen that and it was blessed and their heart was full as we might say and praise was lifted up. They honored God, it was heavenward. You know, our praise are to do that very same thing. And our praise in our life, hopefully, uh, we praise the Lord and we give uh, glorifying thoughts to Him. And especially at this time of year, our play, praise should declare some things about it. That one, the Savior has come. If we know Him as a Savior, hopefully that radiates out of our heart, out of our heart, out of our mouth, out of our actions, that the Savior has come. That we have something that, uh, hopefully the world uh, needs and not only needs, but you wish they desired it a little more. You wish that people were seeking that. And some do when they come to a place and as God convicts and draws that they seek that savior. And some of them, they just don't know the world's offered them and the devil's offered a lot of confusion about that. A lot of other things feeling they can do things themselves. that will give peace feeling that they can uh, fulfill a list of religious deeds and give peace. None of that comes. None of that works. Only through the Savior can they have that peace of God and, of course, have sins forgiven. But if we've had that, our praise should declare that. You know, our praise also should uh, be full of the peace and joy that Christ uh, gives and only He can give. You know, so often, even in this, uh, in this time of year, people get really, uh, they get really anxious. Matter of fact, you could probably go to the stores today. It's uh, the day before Christmas. And there's some anxious people out there. Uh, there's some irate people out there. And, uh, and I guarantee you it wouldn't be long to you. Uh, if you. If you went to a shopping mall this afternoon, it was still open for whatever time, uh, there would be some, um, there'd be some interesting things if you just stopped and listened. And you think, this is nothing about what it's really about, is it? You know, to, to be just, uh, you know, strong, like I said, they're looking for this, they're trying to get that. They're upset over this, uh, just whatever reasons. They're, they're mad that there's people in their way, getting, can't find a parking place, whatever it is. But it surely doesn't seem like there's a lot of peace and joy. And then even if you look on a bigger scale, look at our world. There surely doesn't seem like there's a lot of peace in it, does there? Everywhere you look, it seems like there's a lot of war, destruction, hardship, things that surely don't have the peace and joy that God can bring. Although he can even bring that inside that. You know, Jerusalem at the time that he was brought to, the Jews were not exactly Jerusalem in the area of Bethlehem. When Christ came, 
It was an interesting time even for them. It was under Roman rule. Herod that was put over, it wasn't exactly a nice man. We know that from uh, some of the things we're historically have written about him. But even later on, willing to kill all the children just to kill the competition, if you will. Uh, and what we know that the Bible says about it. But Herod was put as a leader and he just tried to get the Jews to conform from all things we have. He just wanted, sort of wanted to keep the peace and they allowed him to sort of exist and the Romans had uh, sort of put him over that and they ruled there. And the Jews uh, still had their temple worship and all, but the Jews were divided among the different sects of the Bible that we see, uh, the different groups, some of them religious, some of them more political, but the Sadducees and the Pharisees, there was a group called the Essenes. Uh, there was just some different folks that sort of uh, had a prominent place within the society and within that, all having different ideas. Some of them, again, like the Pharisees, very uh, religiously motivated, but very wrong in their uh, foundation and basis. Of course, Christ, uh, he countered both the uh, Sadducees and the Pharisees in his earthly ministry. Uh, and uh, the uh, Sadducees didn't believe in life after death. They didn't believe in resurrections. And uh, they didn't believe that people would live again. And Jesus, uh, again, uh, some of those things were, were countered to him as he would talk to him and deal with him in his life. But there wasn't a lot of even peace and joy to everybody when Christ came into this world. But the people who found Jesus, he brought peace and joy to their life. And peace and joy can be theirs. And the people that went away after meeting Jesus, hopefully carried about peace and joy with them and a message of that, that truly they might go out that all would see and that all may know. You know, and lastly this morning, our praise should go with us. The message of Christmas and the message of what Jesus done and the message of how he came to this earth, that are to go with us wherever we go. Not just on Christmas Day, not just on, uh, you know, a, a day or a week or a few times out of the year, but every day of our lives we are to go. Our Savior has come. Peace and joy can be ours. And all that He did for us that we couldn't do for ourselves. And He comes to do that to all people. Everybody you meet, family, friends, people you don't know. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. And we're thankful that He did. And we are to praise Him for it. And we are to go away glorifying Him. And so uh, as we think of Christmas this year, may we have a praise lifted up. The shepherds on that first Christmas, if you will, left with glorifying, praising God as they went away for all to hear because they had seen something new and something that meant something to them in their life. And they found a Savior and they found some peace and joy. I hope you know that today. It's the true message of Christmas. And as we close our sermon today and our time together, uh, we uh, normally have a time of invitation and, uh, and we will have, uh, again, a, an opportunity if you desire to come up. And also ask Brother Marcus, I'm going to have him come. And uh, we're going to close our sermon a, a little different way. We're going to sing a hymn. And uh, we're going to close with a Christmas hymn and uh, close our time together. And uh, he didn't sing it before, and I'd ask him uh, not to. But uh, we're going to sing uh, Joy to the World. And, uh, and actually, that's a, a hymn that, if you look at it, is written by Isaac Watts. And it was actually written concerning the coming of Christ uh, and actually his coming again. It's a triumphant hymn, but I also think it surely bears the message of Christmas and a hymn that we sing at the, at the time. And he'll uh, tell us what page, I uh, forget if it was 80, uh, 87. And uh, take your hymn books, but let's, uh, as he leads, let's uh, uh, lift our voices in praise uh, to our God. And think of what he has brought us. And again, I hope you have joy in your heart and you know him as Savior. And then we'll close in a word of prayer and we'll be dismissed uh, this morning. And again, uh, hoping that you have a, uh, a Merry Christmas, but that again, you know the Christ of Christmas. And so uh, hymn number uh, 87, Joy to the World, the Lord is Come. And uh, sing out this morning and help him this morning. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing.
wonders of His love, and wonders of His love, and wonders, wonders of His love. Amen. Let's have a...